Welcome to the Belmont Fire Department. My name is Captain David DeMarco and you're watching Hot Topics, Fire Prevention and Safety. And the latest news from the Belmont Fire Department. Fire Chief David DeStefano will be here later to give us a rundown of some of the new equipment that Belmont has. But our first hot topic is home escape planning. Fires occur most often in residential homes. Unattended cooking is the most frequent cause of this type of fire. The majority of victims injured in fires are hurt while attempting to fight the fire. So don't let a fire start. Turn off those burners before you leave the kitchen. Why do you need a home escape plan? Working smoke alarms in a home fire escape plan can reduce your risk of injury or death in a fire. Most fatal fires happen in residential homes. When fire strikes, you may have less than one minute to get out. Every minute that goes by, a fire doubles in size. Fire creates thick, black, choking smoke, which makes it impossible to breathe. Make a plan. Plan a home escape route that includes two ways out of every room. Draw a floor plan of your home. Use arrows to show the escape route and the two ways out of each room. Choose a meeting place outdoors. Make sure that each family member can open doors and window latches. Keep pathways through the house clear of obstacles such as furniture, toys, and the like. Plan around your abilities. If you wear eyeglasses or hearing aids, keep them at your bedside along with a flashlight. Post your house numbers on the outside of your home and make sure the number is clearly visible from the street. Practice your home escape plan. Home escape plans only work if you practice them. Teach your home escape route and meeting place to everyone in the home. Have fire drills frequently, at least twice a year, so actions become automatic behaviors. Hold one family fire drill during the day when everyone is awake and a second drill at night when children are asleep to see how they will respond. What should you do if the fire alarm sounds? Roll out of bed to the floor and stay low beneath the smoke. Crawl to the door. Check the door for heat with the back of your hand. If the door feels cool, open it slowly. If the coast is clear of fire, crawl to escape. Do not open a hot door. Place a towel or a blanket at the base of the door to keep the smoke out. Then crawl to a window and open it. Turn on a light. If you can safely reach the ground, exit. Otherwise, shout and signal for help. Do not jump. A firefighter's first priority is to rescue people. What should you do if your smoke alarm starts sounding or beeping? Signal others by calling out or banging on the wall. Leave your home or your building. Get out and stay out. Go to the family meeting place. Dial 911 from a neighbor's house or other safe place. Wait at the meeting place for the fire department to arrive and let them know if everyone is out safely. And now, Chief David DeStefano is going to be showing you our new shift commander's vehicle. Take it away, Chief. Thank you, Captain DeMarco. Now I'd like to introduce everyone to our new shift commander's vehicle. We received this vehicle and put it into service a couple of months ago, and we'd like to thank the people of Belmont for supporting us and, and allowing us to buy this vehicle. Uh, it's something that will give us increased capability in our command role uh, for fire and other emergency scenes. And I'd like to show you some of the uh, very distinctive features of it, uh, as well as some of the, uh, the new additions to our uh, equipment. If you look inside the driver's uh, compartment of the vehicle, 
you'll see that we have a tablet mounted uh, as well as numerous radios, uh, certainly the controls for the lights and siren, but, but the tablet that we have mounted up front here in the driver's position allows us to get uh, GPS guidance to our calls. It allows us to receive messages directly from the Joint Communications Center. It allows us to send messages to that center as well as sending messages to other units on the road. Uh, it allows us to access uh, internet data, things like material safety data sheets and other chemical information for hazardous material incidents. It also allows us to research anything we need to uh, on the scene of an emergency, including building pre-plans uh, and things of that nature. We also have uh, great interagency uh, and interdepartmental communications capabilities with the uh, array of radios that are mounted in the driver's area. And I'll take you over here to the rear driver's side compartment where you see some of the equipment, equipment that we have mounted in the vehicle. We have a full cache of emergency medical equipment. Uh, we have various other things like an AED. We have a set of incident command vests which we would use during a large scale incident uh, as well as some other uh, various pieces of equipment that help us in our, our daily activities. Around the rear of the vehicle this is really what sets this vehicle apart. Uh, it certainly is a, a, a pretty vehicle, a beautiful vehicle going down the road. Many of you have probably seen it going to calls and going about routine business throughout town. And it looks like it's a great piece of equipment, a great uh, automobile going down the road. But this is really where the meat and potatoes of this truck are, uh, the command area in the back of the vehicle. And this is where we need really robust capabilities uh, to work at incident scenes, run incident command, run the operations section of the general staff. A function of our command operations. So this gives us the ability to bring the tablet from the front of the truck and mount it here in the back of the truck with all those capabilities. We can put it back here and run an incident command post out of the, the rear of the vehicle. We have the same radio capabilities. We have a combustible gas meter that is uh, mounted to the, the back of the vehicle here. This is uh, portable, detachable. We can take it with us to monitor uh, uh, environments for various combustible gases that we might be dealing with. Uh, we also have a, a whiteboard that we set up our command structure and we can draw various uh, diagrams on. Uh, a compartment here with a number of small tools and uh, other things that help us at incident scenes. Uh, a thermal imaging camera, uh, another spare meter is in there as well. And this is a special compartment that the shift commander keeps his uh, turnout gear in. The compartment is seg segregated from the rest of the vehicle and it has a filtering system which allows any vapors that may be on the, uh, the gear after it's been worn to a fire or another emergency scene to escape out the vehicle and not be trapped inside and contaminate the interior portion of the vehicle. So we have quite a lot of capability here just at the tail end of this truck. Uh, another piece of equipment that we house inside this is our incident command board. Uh, and it really is uh, a, a, a play board for everything that happens at an incident, particularly a larger scale incident where we have to manage not only, not only Belmont resources and assets, but resources from other communities. So we have the ability to take these little chips and move them around uh, depending on where those resources are positioned and the role that they play during an incident. We can draw the diagram of the building or the scene that we're operating at and we can keep track of all the resources that are deployed at the incident for everyone's safety. So it's a great platform for us to be able to, uh, to uh, deploy this in conjunction with all the other capabilities that we have here. So uh, aside from being a great looking piece of equipment, uh, the real functionality uh, serves us every single day responding uh, to incidents and gives us great connectivity with other uh, local resources, uh, our mutual aid partners, uh, as well as state and other resources that we may need to bring to bear to uh, mitigate an incident. So I just want to thank you for allowing me to show you this truck. Again, I'd like to thank you for allowing us to purchase this truck for the benefit of everyone here in Belmont. And we'll see you again next time. That's it for this segment of Hot Topics. Thank you for watching. My name is Captain David DeMarco. Join us again next time.